name's Henry. Um, mowers and blowers. Mowers and blowers. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry. And mowers and blowers. Good afternoon. So today's episode, I was 100% planning on taking apart three Briggs & Stratton single overhead valve blown engines that my friend Nick from Belfort gave me a while back. It's taken up a lot of floor space in my garage and it's on my list of things to do. So I was gonna just take apart these after I've taken two consecutive Kohler Courage engines apart in consecutive episodes previous to this one. So I had every intention of doing that today, except yesterday, as I was just sitting in the living room watching TV, Nick from Bellport sends me a text message on Facebook Messenger. And uh, he had seen a listing on Offer Up or Let Go, which by the way, they suck. And it shows this. It shows one of those super old, late 60s. I believe it might be 1968. It's a Toro Professional, 58 inch wide, three gang, real rider mower. I think it has a Briggs and Stratton, maybe five horsepower or so horizontal shaft engine. And it is chain driven and it drives the three reels that are on the mower. The two front ones go up like that, you know, kind of like at a golf course. I believe they might have used these for golf courses back, back then, you know? So it's got two real mowers on the front. I don't mean real as in opposed to fake. I mean real as in like a fishing reel, you know, those round spinny things with the blades on them, right? And it's got one right behind the engine on the ground that takes up the middle part. So look, I'll be honest with you. I've always been kind of intrigued by a push reel mower, you know, the kind in the olden days where you would just push it and this thing would spin and it would cut your grass. I never had one of those. I think I might've tried one once at a friend's house, but I just never had one. And then uh, the new ones that they use for golf courses are ground masters, I believe, right? They're They're, these big things with the thing, the gang, they call them gangs, I guess, right? The, the assembly where it has a reel on it, that's a gang. So this is a three gang one. I've seen like eight gang ones, you know, huge on these machines. So I thought to myself, you know what? I don't really want it. Let me see if my friend Bill Martini wants it. After about an hour or so, when um, Bill didn't really show any interest in wanting it, I thought to myself, hmm, wouldn't this make a really good video? Because I looked on YouTube about these things and it was hard to identify in the beginning until I looked at the pictures closely and I saw the words professional and the number 58. So I just typed in a Google search and there's about 10 or so very short clip videos on YouTube, mostly in German. So maybe these things were really popular in Germany and uh, none of the videos show you how to fix it or anything like that. And I didn't really find one that's exactly like this one. It kind of looks like it, but it's like missing the, the hood or something. This one has a white hood that looks like it's in pretty good shape. You know what I mean? It doesn't look like it would take a whole lot to get it going. However, I think that engine is either the Pulsar Jet type or the uh, One Piece Flow Jet Updraft carburetor on it. From what I remember with that, there's a lot of linkages that go from the gas tank area to the carburetor. Nightmare to work on. I mean, a nightmare, you know? So uh, with that, I thought, ah, forget it, I don't want it. But then I thought to myself, I looked at all these other videos of this machine, and it's like the one that is in East Islip, Long Island here, that's free, that's right, free. It seemed to be in really good shape for something from the late 60s, you know what I mean? So I thought maybe I could just get it and just flip it for like a hundred bucks. Some nut would want it, you know, one of those nostalgic collectors or something, you know, part of those Toro clubs or whatever. Maybe they would want it, right? So I said, all right, well, let me just ask the lady if it's still available. If it's not available, I don't need to make that decision, right? 
So this is an hour and a half later. So I said, is this available? And immediately she writes back and says, yes, it's available. I'm like, man, almost two hours went by since she listed it and nobody wants it? Why do I want it again? Oh yeah, I'm a YouTuber. It would make a great video. So uh, I says, okay, <laughs> give me the address, you know? And then uh, she writes back about an hour or so later and says, listen, are you sure you want it? Because I have like eight other people that texted me after you and uh, they say they want it. So now I'm thinking, ooh, there is some demand for it and I'm the first one to text her, you know? I gotta go get it. So I'm gonna go get it. Uh, I'll put this off until later. If you guys saw yesterday's uh, episode, you'll know that I actually sold that lawnmower that uh, Andy the Brit from across the street gave me. I had it listed for 150 bucks. You guys saw the deal. Guy couldn't find the money, so you had to just give me what he had in his wallet, right? 80 bucks. Whether or not he was gonna send me the money later via PayPal, I just basically trusted the guy, you know what I mean? And if he didn't pay me, I would have been kind of okay with it. I would have felt bamboozled, you know what I'm saying? But uh, honestly, it's a pretty old mower, you know, and uh, for me to get 80 bucks out of it already is something, you know? And a lot of you subscribers saying, uh, were asking, man, I, Henry, you're more trustworthy than I would have been, you know? Uh, I, I probably wouldn't have sold it to the guy unless he had all the money, you know? But you gotta think about it this way, you know, I got it for free. You don't run into guys that try to bamboozle you too often, you know what I mean? Uh, yes, even here in New York, you don't. <laughs> People are for the most part honest. And uh, I had faith that the guy would pay me. Um, about an hour or so after I got home, he PayPal'd me the 70 bucks. It was about that time, and I was sort of running out of stickers because you guys had bought, bought most of them already, you know, I still have Quite a few, but you know, nevertheless, it was it was time for me to order a new design. You know what I mean? So these came yesterday. It's a design that I put together, and I thought you might uh, like it. It's inspired by my uh, Desert Sand um, LT1000 Humvee <laughs> lawn tractor mud mower with the Gatling gun. You guys remember that project? That was a very popular project. So. I designed these new subdued camouflage American flag stickers with my logo on it in holographic um, finish. It's very good quality stickers and I ordered 50. So this is a limited edition and it has my um, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, mowersblowers.com on the bottom subdued if you guys know what subdued is if you were with the military or law enforcement you'll know that subdued is almost like a camel thing you know some people have uniforms that are that the colors don't show so well because you know you you want covert ops you know like if you're going somewhere at night you don't want people to see these bright graphics on your patch so the patches are subdued mostly uh, olive green or black or something so that you don't really see the logo but yet in the daytime you see the logo and the patch and the insignia and stuff so this is a digital camo uh, on the American flag it's got my logo on it and it's holographic and these sell for five dollars also on my eBay um, listings uh, I have listings of all four of my stickers on the bottom of every description of every video I make. So um, support the channel, buy a sticker. If you don't have one, the, uh, one of these in your collection yet, and you definitely don't because I just got them in the mail, right? Uh, this is a way for you guys to support the channel. Uh, like I said, I do videos every day, but uh, if I don't sell stickers, I don't have the motivation to go on. <laughs> you know what I mean? Anyway, uh, long monologue, but I had a lot to tell you guys, and uh, now I'll be on my way to East Islip, Long Island, to pick up that 1960s Toro Professional 58 Three Gang Real Mower. For free. If it wasn't free, I'm not going, you know what I mean? But I'll go because, like I said, 
I think it'll make a good video. Okay guys, so here I am in uh, East Islip. Uh, it took me about 25 minutes to get here and apparently it's an estate sale is what it is. Um, I believe this is her house and her friend gave her all this stuff. So we have a lot of um, Toro snow hound. Snow blowers. This stuff is a little too old for me even, you know what I mean? But, uh, and they're, they're missing engines. Um, this thing here is another gang. It's a gang, you know? It's a real, you know, a real, <laughs> R-E-E-L, uh, gang assembly. Look at this. It's a, it's a roller. Isn't that cool? Of course, it doesn't have an engine, but it's cool. Uh, she says that if nobody buys this by Friday, I can come back and get it. It looks like a commercial um, power washer with a Briggs 190 six horsepower horizontal engine. This could be useful. Generac, 2250 PSI with the gun. This is a uh, compressor. that electric electric compressor electric compressor anyway so here is the um, <clears throat> here is the thing <laughs> man that's I thought it was in better shape in the pictures but uh, I mean it looks kind of cool you know what I mean it's small really small here let, let me get near it so you guys can see the, the difference of the size Uh, sit on it. Sit on it, Ralph. Look at that. So um, it has a cable. That's kind of cool. Uh, tires look like they hold air. Uh, this this is the gang, the middle, the middle part of the gang, and then there's two front parts of the gang. So. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to get this out of here. I guess I'll slowly try to push it out of here or drag it out of here with my with my hands. Uh, the front part is going to be tough because look, it's like really wide. I don't even know if that'll fit in my van now, you know, now that I'm thinking about it. I'm going to have to see. And I have to drag it through here, through these, this area here. You know, that's not gonna fit through there. You know what I mean? Oh, man. I'm not sure. I can only find out by trying, right? I'm gonna put you guys on time lapse.
So there it is. This is my Toro Professional 58 three gang real mower. <laughs> I don't know why I have it, but it looks pretty cool. You know what I mean? Um, and I like Toros. Everything, every Toro item that I've ever had, I always felt it was pretty good quality. Even those, um, you know, 1238 XL uh, lawn tractors, they've always been really good, you know, with the exception of maybe the mower deck or something like that. So uh, it took a little bit of doing to get it into my van because it's so wide. Um, the wheelbase itself is probably like 42 or something like that, right? Uh, but because of the, the front gang reel blades, I had to kind of prop it up with this bungee cord to make it stick up like that, you know what I mean? So that it would kind of clear. It wouldn't clear my doors until I unlatched the hinges, if you will, so that the doors swing out completely, you know? So that way it, it, it went in ex uh, perfectly. Uh, Any more, I don't think it would have fit, you know. Uh, I guess you could have finagled one side in first, then finagled the other side in first at an angle, you know. Um, so it rolls forward, but it doesn't roll backwards. So when I put this in front first, right, I wasn't able to pull it out because it wouldn't go in reverse. The wheels would lock when you try to go in reverse. The only way to do that is to lift one side of it and the bulk of the weight is in the front, so it wasn't a possibility. But fortunately though, since it's a three-wheeler, right, I could just turn it around in the van. It was very easy. Then I just rolled it down. Then once it got to that incline, I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I just had to let go, you know what I mean? But uh, it got off uh, pretty well, you know, and uh, you know, I don't really see anything majorly wrong with it other than it needs work, you know what I mean? But it is in pretty good condition. Let's, uh, let's take a look around it, huh? So let's start with this side first. The tires are actually in pretty good shape. I don't see any dry rot or anything. And I used my air compressor to pump up the tires a little bit. And it pumped up very easily. And it looks like it holds air. Like I said, tire tread looks pretty good. Ooh! A free magnet scores <laughs> good luck looking at that serial number wait a minute Holy shit. okay I'm looking here it's uh serial number zero three one oh two oh seven oh nine oh four Toro Manufacturing Corporation, Minneapolis, Minnesota, USA. Uh, back then, they made these things really, really good. Look at that. I didn't notice this. Stop. Slow, fast, and choke. Look at that. Look at this. When I do choke, look at that. I've never seen that before. Look at that. That would be the choke, eh? Hey! <laughs> cool. I've never seen that before. This is the muffler. The muffler wrap. I never understood how this doesn't catch on fire. I don't know what this is. Could it be the locking mechanism for turning? So, to put the gang down, you just, I'm going to hurt myself, I know it. As you can see, this is the way the pivot moves for the turning. It's just uh, two tie cables. The pulley system, kind of cool, huh? And adjust the level of um, this thing that pushes the grass down to give it that striped look, maybe. 
See the blades under there? Obviously needs sharpening. Tie rods to turn or to just hold it in place. This is a Briggs engine. giving you guys an overview of looking at it for the very first time in detail just like I am this is a dipstick so this is 58 see it's a hose clamp holding something over there it's like steering tie rods no they are tie rods though. Okay, this is uh, forward, neutral, and reverse doesn't seem to go down. Here is, and I don't know what that is. Engage, okay. This engages the blades. That's what that says, engage. So this is engages the blades. This is the transmission shifter. We, uh, should we try to take this off and see what kind of engine's in here? If it's held on with two Phillips. It's got these tiny little screws in here with a nut. It was very difficult to get off. Are you guys ready to see what's under here? Are you ready? You guys get to see it on the next Mowers and Blowers! I'm just kidding. Okay. Cool. I almost guarantee you this is going to have a points magneto in here, which probably wouldn't have any spark. I'm just kind of scared to see how much gas is in here, you know? Oh, hell. It's almost half full of gas. Maybe it's ethanol free gas? Hope the gas tank's not rusted out, you know. Should we try and pull it? Let's choke it. It's choked. Hmm. It's got the ball bearing type recoil starter. Seems like it's engaged in the drive. That's what it feels like because when I pull it, it wants to go forward. It does. This is going to require quite a bit of work, I think, fellas. And I don't know if I want to do that. Oh, come on, Henry. You got to get it fixed. And look, look at this rope. This rope is on its last pull, and if I pull it anymore, it's going to be done ski for sure. So I'm not going to pull it anymore. I'm going to have to take it apart and fix the recoil starter for sure if I wanted to try this out, you know? Well, I won't be able to see if the engine starts uh, today because I'd have to fix the, the pull rope for that uh, recoil starter first. Then we can check for spark and maybe put a little bit of go-go juice into the carburetor, see if it fires up. We're gonna have to do that tomorrow because I am beat. I wanted to show you guys one more thing before I, I stop. Um, if you look at the lever here, right? Here is the clutch. Look how it works. To go forward, right? 
It's a pulley there with a thick belt that goes around the crankshaft. Right now there's slack on it so it won't go anywhere. When you're ready to go, it turns this, turns the chain, and uh, I guess it turns the wheel. Same concept goes on the other side where there's a pulley, a tensioner arm that gives um, tension to the inner belt, also about an inch or so, inch and a quarter wide. And then that engages the pulley down there that turns the chain that spins the reels. So pretty cool. Uh, belts are all there, you know, and the mechanism that it that's used to engage both pulleys seem to work properly. Let's check the earl. It's got low earl and black earl tar. And this reservoir is very loose, like it'll float, come out. So there's a nut there, I need to just tighten it. But uh, if you guys know what kind of engine this is, it's obviously a Briggs, probably five horizontal. And uh, the carburetor is the, the diaphragm one with the pulse jet type thing that goes into the tank deep. I don't see any markings anywhere. Oh, except for over here. I'm gonna try to clean that up a little bit. Using some super clean. Spraying a little bit over there, wiping gently. Just to see if I could see any model numbers or markings. Okay, I see it. It says, uh, Briggs & Stratton Corporation, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Crankcase oil, uh, winter use, SAE 5W20, summer SAE, you can't see it. And that's not the label we want either. I don't see any other markings anywhere on this engine. Uh, my friend Five Speed Ash, Nick from uh, Lindenhurst. I'm sure he knows what kind of engine this is. But actually, I believe they sell this carburetor, um, Chinese copy, something similar to it at least. The linkages are kind of um, difficult to play with. There's two long rods that go down. So I think it's kind of cool, you know? Uh, <laughs> I've never messed with anything like this. I think it's kind of rare because honestly, uh, I've been doing uh, small engines for about three years. Had over 250, 300 machines, you know, in that time. I've never seen this before, ever, you know? And I like Toros because I always thought their quality was good. Uh, this seems like it's all here and it's not in terrible shape considering it's from the 60s, you know what I mean? Um, I don't know, I'd, I'd like to try to get this engine running, you know, and uh, if I don't, um, I'll just take a picture picture of it or two or three and uh, post it for like uh, 250, you know what I mean? Some nut may want it, who knows? So uh, it was worth going to get, you know, at least to show you guys what's out there, you know, what's out there for free. That's right, free. Thanks a lot for joining me on today's Toro Professional 58 three gang reel mower that I got for free. <laughs> fun picking, really fun picking. It was a little bit to get it into the van, but uh, you know, it's at the mowers and blowers headquarters now, and uh, we can tool with this in the upcoming videos. Remember, if you guys would like to support the channel, get one of my new camouflage subdued stickers. Thanks a lot for joining me on today's episode. We'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers.
I'm Andy from Jericho. See, See you guys, guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey, if you guys enjoyed the video, remember to give me a like. Also, comment below. Subscribe. Remember, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. It's free, right? Also, hit that little bell. That way you'll get post notifications whenever there's a new video and you won't miss out on any of them. Remember to follow my Instagram and Facebook, as well as if you'd like to donate a dollar or two, paypal.me slash mowers and blowers. Really appreciate all the support. Also, to keep the videos coming every day, support the channel. Bye.